It was a day I will never forget. It was an extremely challenging day. One of my students decided to wreak havoc in the whole school. I was teaching my lesson and all of a sudden, my emotionally disturbed student decides to get angry at another student and runs away from my classroom. He's a big kid. Runs away, decide, decides to destroy everything at his sight. Banging doors, ripping bulletin boards, and running around the building, not knowing what he's going to do next. Completely outraged. Now, the father of this, of this student of mine thought that we are trying to get rid of the student and every little thing that he does we're going to call and we're going to we're going to try to file reports that this student doesn't belong in the school yet I knew that I felt differently personally I knew that I was doing all that I can as a teacher as a special ed instructor to do all that I can to help this child to give him what he needs we called the father the father came enraged and said see again again another thing another another reason why I came you just can't handle him and as the student was going to the second floor and there was a see-through wall going to, going up the staircase he was banging screaming profanities I looked at this boy and I motioned to him like this come to me come to me the boy came to me immediately and I told the father and I told the rest of the administration I just want to be alone with him I just want to talk to him and I said I said to the father later on that if we were trying to get rid of him if I as an instructor was trying to look for reasons to remove him from my classroom the child would have felt the dislike the child would have felt the hatred the child would have felt that I was uncomfortable being around him and this was his proof that it isn't true the child came to me crying sobbing this big kid was completely distraught he didn't want to go back home he knew he was going to face intense consequences for his behavior and this is compassion who are we kind and compassionate to are you comp compassionate and kind towards people who you like towards people who are going to return the favor to you towards people who are going to recognize and acknowledge your kindness to people who are going to return the favor and do more for you who are we truly kind to we learn the beauty of pure kindness from none other than Abraham Avinu our forefather Abraham Avinu said little and did much when he was called to serve to serve anyone what did he say he said I will take bread I will take bread what did he really do? He served an elaborate feast of many delicacies. Despite his old age, despite his, uh, uh, his state when he was circumcised at an old age, despite how he felt so ill and unwell, despite that, he did it. Whenever you have an opportunity to do something and you don't want to do it, do it quickly. We learned this from Abraham Avinu as well. Do it quickly. When Abraham was told by Hashem to, he must get rid of Yishmael and he must get rid of um, his wife Hagar. He must get rid of her, his maidservant, because they're not good for him. He listened to Sarah, his wife, and she said, Yishmael is not a, going to be a good influence on our son Yitzhak. So, but it pained him it pained him so much it pained Abraham so much to get rid of his uh, maidservant Hagar and Ishmael he loved them however what did he do he woke up early in the morning
morning to do so. He woke up early. He made sure that he did the will of Hashem, the will of the Almighty, with speed, with alacrity, and he did it early in the morning. He didn't procrastinate and think of all the painful reasons why he shouldn't do it and and the push the whole um, the whole the whole event off. He didn't do that. He acted with true will of Hashem, with doing the will of Hashem, and this is what we learn from him in order for us to really do what's right. We have to be motivated by doing what's right, not by what feels good to me, not by what I want to do. We know that if we get two people, we get three opinions. So, but not what's good for me, but not what, not what feels good, what I'm comfortable with. I have to know that if this is the proper thing to do, I have to do what's right. The main goal in Abraham's life was to do the will of Hashem, the will of God. You know, to us ladies of all ages and stages, it can be challenging, but we can do it. For example, waking up 30 minutes before everybody else does in the family, if you're a young mother, if you're a mother and a wife, just to be happier, to be, if you're not a morning person, to get in the mood, it's a tremendous kindness, kindness to your family that the children see that you, you, um, you kiss them goodbye for the rest of the day, you wish them uh, amazing wishes for them to have a productive day of learning to your husband, it just sets off the day in a whole different foot. You know, when you see a cashier, to compliment her, to compliment on her earrings, maybe on her makeup, maybe on her hair color, maybe on what she's wearing, uh, because you you just make a whole world of a difference by being by recognizing someone. Robert and Esther Bela Schwartz was going to a store and running some errands, and what happened was she was just saying, "Wow," um, she said to the cashier, "Thank you for smiling at me. I, you must be tired, uh, and thank you for you know smiling. Your smile made me feel better." And the cashier was just like talking to her. Uh, for a few minutes and then she told her you know I wish more people were like you I wish more people were just talkative and nice and, and pleasant I wish they were more like you and you could imagine the cashier probably felt like bouncing off her feet the rest of the day really really nice and um, another act of kindness you can do is if you're living with your parents um, surprise your um, cranky parents or from surprise your brother or a difficult person who you live with, or whoever, surprise them with a delicious breakfast. You know, it's an act of kindness. You may be even upset at them, or not on the best terms, but you do something nice, and believe me, when you do something nice, you, it's just, um, people want to do more for you. You know, the house is a disaster, and you just don't know where to put yourself. You don't know where to start first. Put a 10-minute timer. Do it quickly. Do it quickly, especially if you don't like cleaning. You'll be surprised at how much you get done. Just put a 10-minute timer. Ironing, same thing. Laundry, same thing. Dishes, put a 10-minute timer. And uh, you'll be surprised at how quick the time goes by and how much you get done. Calling up an elderly person or a mother who, a new, a new mother who just had a baby. You know, you're going to the store anyway. Call them up. Ask them how they are. Ask them if they need anything. It goes a long way. And it's an act of kindness. Okay. So Tehillim 145 really shows how we can emulate God. We can em emulate Hashem. And we can truly act kindly and compassionately. By saying Perak, which is Perak 145, Tehillim 145, 8 and 9, line 8 and 9. Gracious and merciful is Hashem, slow to anger, and great in bestowing kindness. Hashem is good to all. His mercies are on all his works. End quote. The Torah tells us to emulate his ways, God's ways, to walk in his ways. How can we possibly do that? You know, it's easy to do a compa uh, to do act of kindness to someone. It's really easy. Com Compared to acting compassionately. Why? When you are 
kind to someone, you're doing a physical action. You can feel the action. You could tell what it is. You could see it. Now, when someone acts compassionately, that means it's an internal feeling. When you feel compassionate towards someone, maybe you uh, feel compassion towards a friend or relative because you feel their pain. They mean something to you. Maybe you heard of a story that, that was um, a sad story and you feel you couldn't relate. And that arouses feelings of compassion towards this person that you read about you don't even know. So compassion is internal and kindness is external. That's why it's easy for us to be kind. Now, compassion is much harder to do than acts of kindness. This was the level of Raham who looked out for people in order for him to do kindness towards them. We shouldn't wait, says Rabbi Mordechai Gifter of Blessed Memory, we shouldn't wait for things to come up in our lives for us to do kindness. We should be on the lookout to really, really see, listen, something's going to come up right now. She probably needs me. She's going through this thing in her life. He probably needs me. He just had it. He just said it. He has a hard day. Whatever that it is, if you see a situation in your life where you heard about someone having having it hard, having a difficult time, that's a signal. That's a message saying, you know what? I can be helpful. I can be helpful. I can practice my acts of kindness, goodwill, and compassion. Hashem is good to all. How can we be good to all? You know, we are limited in our time. We are limited in our resources. We are limited financially, money-wise. We are limited. We don't have so many resources. Hashem is infinite. He has infinite amount of resources, infinite amount of energy, and infinite amount of time. There's no such thing as time in Hashem's world. So what are we talking about here? What we're talking about here is I don't only do acts of kindness and compassion towards people that I like, towards people I can relate to, towards my family and friends. I should be just compassionate and kind towards everyone. Why? Because I am emulating Hashem. I am epitomizing Him. I want to be like Him. I want to do the right thing. I want to do the proper thing. So this is something that's within us and within our ability to do. And no matter how kind you are currently, no matter how compassionate you are, some people are naturally more kind or compassionate, elevate your level. Go a level higher. Bump yourself up. Do more. Ask yourself. Practical tip for you. Ask yourself, in what ways could I be kinder to other people? In what ways could I be more compassionate? You know, to exercise compassion, look at a person and say, listen, she may be not great with her kids. She may not know how to discipline them. But I'm not great at many things. So I can feel compassionate towards her or towards this person that, listen, there's some things I'm good at. There's some things she's good at. And to feel compassion, not to be judgmental, to want to be helpful, to want to be kind, to want to be compassionate. Another tip is do an act of kindness that you don't really want to do once a day. Once a day, just do it. One act of kindness. And you're going to see your character will change slowly but surely. So I want to um, thank Rabbi Zelig Pliskin for Growth Through Torah and Growth Through Tehillim for his books. And we received many of these beautiful ideas. May we merit to develop an attitude of compassion and kindness that actually surrounds the entire universe. Leia Ramov, being and becoming.